It's uh, January 29, 2018. It's time to uh, get full of the Holy Spirit and fire. It's time to get full of the heart of God. It's time to get real, get serious, repent, cleanse your hands, purify your heart. Get out of double-mindedness. Get in agreement. How can you walk in agreement with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost unless you agree? You have to repent and change. Renew your mind. Be transformed so you can agree with God, so you can walk together. And he will confirm you more and more and more with miracles and signs and wonders. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, healings, miracles, signs and wonders, dreams and visions, prophecy. Preaching the gospel with signs and wonders, God confirming you, working with you and confirming you with signs and wonders and miracles. God is all about signs and wonders and miracles. Read the Bible. Don't listen to stupid, cessationist, antichrist idiots and fools. A companion of fools will be destroyed. A companion of wise people will get wiser still. You will be successful. You will be powerful. Be imitators of God as dear children. Ephesians 5.1, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you to be fishers of men. He told the fishermen over there, first, in front of the first people he got was fishermen. I love fishing. I, I catch fish all over the world. Lots of fish, big fish, tons of fish. Uh, those are some of my photos, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so, and, uh, but when you go fishing, it takes faith. Faith without works is dead. You go fishing, you, t you do actions and works t to catch fish. You can't really see them sometimes, but you know probably they're there. You see the right structure. You see the right depth of water and current. And maybe you see the birds chasing the sardines or the whatever. And so you can make a pretty good, you know, you know you'll, you'll know. And then you, you, you get them. So you can't see them, but by faith you drop down your hooks and what you're doing. Or you cast over there and work the lure and so forth uh, by faith. And then all of a sudden... You're looking, what you cannot see, all of a sudden you got you got a fish. So anyway, so Jesus took those people. He said, from now on you're going to catch men. You're going to catch men and women for eternity, for heaven, rescue them. So um, Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. That's it. Son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost, he said. He said, the Spirit of the Lord's army has anointed me to preach the gospel. Heal the broken heart, set the captives free, open the eyes of the blind. Set people free, save them from hell, from eternity. God is full of compassion and <laughs> overwhelming compassion and love for the lost people that are suffering and then also going to hell. I had an encounter with God in 1998 at a Rodney Howard Brown summer camp meeting in Tampa, Florida, at the University of Tampa there, uh, Sun Dome. Evangelist Mike Francine and his wife Kim Francine were, uh, Mike Francine was preaching that night. He's a disciple of T.L. Osborne in Benson, Idaho. And it was the last night of the camp meeting in, uh, of Rodney Howard Brown's awesome 1998 camp meeting there. Awesome fire of God, truth, power, presence of God, great teaching, impartation, awesome music, <coughs> worship. <coughs> Heaven came every day, every night. But anyway, he preached about, uh, you know, uh, the saving souls, preaching the gospel. At the end of that, I, I you know, my, the Holy Spirit in me and my spirit was jumping all over the place and heart pounding. And I went up there and with probably two or three hundred other people, I don't know a lot, probably three hundred people all around the Sun Dome. And Rodney Howard Brown and his wife and uh, Mike Francine and his wife, they all four were going along praying for people. Field, 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 and he said something to me. He prophesied, and then um, this power of God hit me and knocked me over there. And for over one hour, I was screaming like a woman having a baby. I couldn't cry hard enough, loud enough. It was like you put a, a garden hose to a fire hydrant. Crying and screaming for the lost people that are going to hell and for their suffering they experience now in this life. 
I saw all these Asian people looking at me, as millions of them as far as I could see. And then I also I saw in a vision, open or shut, saw these people, these people with a red dot looking at me as far as your eye could see, millions of them. So that's obviously India in East Asia, you know. And uh, that was 1998. And uh, I could feel the people's pain in this life and when they go to hell, and then I could feel what Jesus feels for them. He felt their pain in this life, and when they went to hell, he cried and was so sad and moved with compassion. And uh, I let, he let me feel that. He put that in me, a download. And then every once in a while, that would trigger. And you just weep and weep and weep and can't talk. And it's uncontrollably, it's overwhelming. And, um, and then um, you go. I went and lived in Indonesia for, oh, man, what, uh, 10 years? Over 10 years. And from Indonesia, we go back and forth to India all the time. So uh, basically lived in Indonesia and India for over 10 years. It was great. And um, then after that, felt to go to uh, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Pacific Islands. And um, heck, if you're based in Fiji and you just go all over north, south, east, and west, there's all kind of forgotten people out there. Melanesia, Micronesia, um, Kiribati, Marshall Islands. Uh, just all over the place. There's people out there that God cares about, out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, middle of nowhere. It's beautiful, but sometimes it's harsh. Uh, there's people out there. The problem is they're getting more cell phones, cell phone towers and communic cell phones and Internet. So I was in this most remote place of Vanuatu, northern Vanuatu, which is by the Solomon Islands. It's where the Baba Black Sheep squadron, squadron would be sometimes there and throughout Solomon's in World War II. And uh, it was, anyway, it used to be called New Hebrides. Anyway, way in the middle, northern, northern part out there, out in the middle of nowhere, this little old podunk town. And I went to try to do some email, let's see if the computer's, if its net's even working. Um, and the Holy Spirit said, look at the history on the computer. And just nothing but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, I mean, I didn't, I mean, just as far as you, I could see, they're just porn sites, you know. That, so these uh, men and boys, they come in from the village. Some of them come from out in the middle of nowhere. They barely wear clothes. These people got bones in their nose, uh, half-naked grass skirts, doing black magic, drinking cheap alcohol, and uh, smoking their dope and weed. And they come to town and look at the porn and buy some alcohol, go back to the village and molest the poor girls over there. These dumb idiots bring back venereal diseases to their wives and it's horrible. You understand me? That's what you see a lot of out in the Pacific Islands. Nobody's out, no, there's no law, there's no, I mean, heck in Fiji, the pa it's in the newspaper all the time, in Fiji, the, the pastors are in jail for raping their congregation members. Married pastors raping the women in their churches in Fiji. Methodists, mainly, but Baptists and uh, all kind of mess. People that are not filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, because the Holy Ghost and fire makes you pure and holy, activates your conscience. You can't be a real Christian if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Read the book of Acts, you know, and uh, that's just the way it is. If you're against that, you're Antichrist. You're a cessationist, you're an Antichrist, you're a child of the devil, Jesus said, and that's it. And so anyway, and so, I mean, just everywhere you go, there's hell and mess. Just just peel back the, the fake cover and you'll see here in a minute, just hell everywhere. It's because the church has been weak and pathetic and blind and or well, the pastors have been pieces of crap and not let the people do what the Bible commands to do for whatever reason. One doctrine of demons that says you got to wait for a calling or it costs too much money or it's too scary, too dangerous. Well, these cheapskate sissies that are not warriors and they don't even know God, they don't want you to go out there and be real because you'll make them look bad. But you got to go and do it so you can save the lost, lay down your life. The real shepherd that's a Jesus man and woman he, he, he cares for the sheep. The hireling doesn't care for the sheep. They don't go out there and win souls. They don't go to all the world. 
preach the gospel and seek and save the lost and compel people to be saved, they don't do that because they're a hireling and they're going to hell and that's good. They should go to hell. Murderers. They don't want to enter in and they don't let you enter in. But get out of them kind of churches and just go do what the Bible says and go out there and seek and save the lost. Preach the gospel. Cast out demons. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Freely you receive, freely give. The works I do, Jesus said, you shall do and greater. You receive power and the Holy Ghost comes upon you and be a witness to me everywhere all over the world. God will work with you and confirm the word of the gospel and the word of the anointing that you speak. He'll confirm you with signs and wonders and miracles following. And confirm that your word is true and they can say nothing against it. And that's what you got to do. You can't go out there and argue with a Muslim, your Bible against him, your opinion against his, your doctrine against him. They'll, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. You go out there and speak the truth. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. God, he says, I do not change. And so he, what he did is what he does all the time. He preached the word, he healed the sick, cast out devils, cleansed the lepers. Proven that this word that he speaks is from God because God uh, is with you and backs you up. They said, how can, this, how can a sinner do these great works like this? And the Pharisee says, ah, shut up. Because they got nothing to say about it. So you go out there and preach the gospel. Jesus is the only way. Yes, son of God, only way. And watch this. Bring me the blind man. Bring me the deaf and the crippled. Bring me the insane. Boom, by the power. Look at here. God Almighty, you see the power of miracles, sons and wonders. You see the spirit of God, the power and presence. He's confirming what I'm saying, the, the gospel, and now you know it's true because he confirmed it. And the evil people will run away or they will get saved. This happened to me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times in the most dangerous parts of Indonesia where they slaughter and kill. They do ethnic cleansings. Uh, where they've had a civil war in North Sumatra, Atri, I went preaching up in there. They uh, been been having horrible, gross atrocities, civil war for I don't know what forty years, non nonstop. That's where that some uh, biggest some some uh, tsunami in history kicked off. The land said enough. <laughs> they had that big uh, earthquake there and tsunami. I preached all around there, one of the most dangerous places on earth, North Aceh, uh, Sumatra. I preached all up in there in uh, Maluku, North Indonesia, Central Java, West Java. Same as, there would be no different than preaching in Pakistan or uh, what do you call it, Somalia, you name it. Name the worst place. Pre preaching in Saudi Arabia, no different. These are Wahhabi, uh, dangerous people. And everywhere I just said, when they're preaching, thousands and thousands of people saved, healed, delivered, come to Jesus, real believers, converted. Why? The blind see, the deaf hear, the cripples walk, devils are cast out, uh, cancers are healed. Every signs and wonder and miracles happening gifts of the spirit, prophecy, and the same guy standing in the back of the church ready to kill you after the service with clubs and machetes, all the top cocktails, whatever, throwing rocks on the tin roof of the church, ready to kill you, signs and wonders and miracles came, the presence of God came, some of them ran away afraid, the other ones were terrified on their knees and got saved, amen. Why? Their grandma was healed, the little people, their family was healed. Miracle signs and wonders. The presence of God came. And that's how it goes. God will not leave you or forsake you. He will back you up. I'm with you always, even unto the ends of the earth, he said. All power in heaven and earth, Jesus said, is given unto me. And I'm with you. Go therefore. Why? I'm with you. No one can stand against you. God is for you. No foe can stand against you. They will flee seven ways. The, the, the God will cause the fear of him and you to fall upon the nations around the bath, and they will fear you, and they will fear God in you. They will fear Christ in you. They'll either get saved or they'll run away. They'll have nothing to say. I've seen people get frozen, tried to shoot me with a gun, were frozen, couldn't pull the trigger. Let's go on and on and on. I'm talking about, well, I've been preaching full, full time for 25 years, and uh, miracles and signs and wonders in... Well, I've been to over 30 countries and just rule and reign, just manhandle flesh and demons. Manhandle it. Whatever devil, it doesn't matter. Just by the Holy Ghost power and fire and the name of Jesus, you, you, you yield yourself to him. You let God possess you. You, get the, you let the Holy Spirit possess you. And he works through you. There's, there, there's nothing is impossible when you get yield yourself to that anointing, just like Ezekiel, more, 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 deeper, 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 and all of a sudden, like Paul said, 
it's not I, but the anointing of Jesus in me and through me. That's what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Anyway, and so the, the people out there going to hell, it's getting worse. So church people, Christian people, whatever, get out there and preach the gospel and let God flow through you and get in there and read the word and obey the word and command yourself to live by the Bible and the word of God and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and fire all the time, every day. If you've had it, get it again. Get more, get refilled, get refreshed. And that's it. And get filled with love and get the heart of God in you. And go out there and, and, and seek and save the lost. Preach the gospel. I'm, t I'm telling you, don't fear man, fear God. Get out there and do it. You're going to go to hell. Revelation 21 verse 8. The fearful, the unbelieving, the, and all this mess. The first thing that gets you thrown in hell forever is fear and unbelief. Hello. Get out of your dead church. Get out, of, get under, get out from under a, a dead pastor, a, 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 a fearful pastor, a pastor that's not a warrior. Jesus was a warrior. King David was a warrior. Joshua was a warrior. Elijah was a warrior. Hello. Paul was a warrior. Get out there and be a warrior. He says, I'm going to raise up shepherds and people, witnesses after my heart. Ezekiel 34, what, Jeremiah 23. They care for the scattered sheep and go out there and get them because the wolves and the demons are eating them alive. Sin and Demons are bound people up. Get out there and set them free with the power and the fire. Or you'll go to hell for being fearful and unbelieving, being a coward, being selfish, idolater. And you know, it's almost every church person you can think of because the pastors are not telling them the truth. They're, these dead, damnable Pharisee uh, hirelings, false pastors, false shepherds, they want the people to stay in the church, keep giving them tithes so the pastor can whatever be an idolater, but you should get the people trained up, fired up, and then send them out. Command them. Get out there and win souls. What are you doing? Go somewhere and go to Sri Lanka. Go to China. Go to Cambodia. Go to Laos. Go to, uh, get out there and start a church and win souls. Or are you going to go to hell for eternity? Get out there and lose your life so you can gain it for eternity. Hello. My God, read the Bible and it, believe it and live it and do it. That's it. Anyway, this is where I used to live. Look at here. See? Can you see that? That's Indonesia. So they cut off the Christian's head, these little stupid devil boys. And uh, these people are not playing. And I, I not only lived there, I ruled and reigned, me and the Holy Ghost. Christian martyrs. Burning churches, it's not a joke. God is very serious. He didn't, he didn't make a suggestion. He made a command to go out there and, um, you know, make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, spent so much time in India, you see these stupid uh, Hindus and Punjabis and other ones, they'll throw acid on and they'll burn people. You know, to a Hindu that a female is bad luck, there's a occupation for females in India where their job is to kill the, the newborn girl baby because the Hindu thinks it's bad luck. You know that. Yep. So who's going to defend them? You need to get out there and... and uh, Get these people saved so they don't they don't act like evil devils like that. They don't act like murderers. Are you hearing me? And so uh, it's up to you to be salt and light. Get out there and make a difference. Churches burned in Indonesia. I lived where they kill the Christians. I lived where they try to kidnap. I lived. Well, there's, here's some uh, Christian Muslim violence over there in Maluku. Went over there and well, the Holy Ghost and fire and the gospel uh, win tens and thousands of people to the Lord. Cast out the demons out of them. They became 
loving, decent, nice people instead of uh, murderers and devils. And it's all over the place. And uh, you got to do something about it. You got to obey. God is not joking. Here we go. Burned out churches. Been over there. Ternate. Maluku. All over Java. This is very serious, you know. And uh, you got to do... What are you doing about it? What are you going to do for eternity? Uh, I, 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 are you going to make heaven? Are you going to be... Uh, worker of iniquity that was fearful and unbelieving? Or is he going to say, well done, good, faithful servant? Uh, you used what I gave you. I gave you the gospel. I gave you the Holy Ghost. I gave you the truth and love. Did you go out there and uh, share it and compel people and make disciples? Did you do that? Very serious, you know. Very serious. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that uh, you need to intervene. You know, God... You don't send God and the angel to go do it. He told you to do it, you see. God works through his people. God don't go out there and um, just do things all by himself. That's stupidity and uh, superstition and ignorance, you know. So here we go. This girl, they tried to cut her head off. Christian girl, little old girl. This is no joke. So, uh, you know, what are you doing? Heads cut off. It's no joke. You know. So, um, Indonesia. This is, uh, like I said, I lived over here, you know, for a long time. So it'll make you be real, I tell you that. And uh, I've, I've been over to a place where they did ethnic cleansings and slaughtered uh, slaughtered almost all the Christians and the, 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 the families that remained I was trying to pray for them and just they could barely talk and I could feel their pain and almost everybody got killed there slaughtered and you just let the Lord touch them and try to heal them and uh You know, it's very serious. It's very serious. Um, you just can't imagine that sort of shock and pain. But it's going on all over the place. And if you don't fight it, if you don't get people saved and delivered, then the evil keeps growing and the people get more demon-possessed and more evil and wicked. And what you don't fight and, 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 and fight against, it can come back and bite you. You want to stop it before it gets worse, generation by generation. So whatever you're fighting to stop, you're making a better world for tomorrow and, you know, kids and grandkids and all that. So you better get out there and fight evil. It's very serious. Yeah. Kids praying. God send someone to help us, you know. So, you better get real. Shake yourself. Get out of stupid TV. Get out of stupid sports, basketball, football mess. Get out of your dumb TV shows and movies and sin. And read the Bible and pray and fast and seek God. And then get out there and preach the gospel. Lead people to Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't cave in. Say, there's only one way. It's not universalism. One way. And then heal the sick. By the authority of Jesus Christ, cast out demons, heal the sick, cleanse it, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, prophesy. First Corinthians 12, the gifts. Show people, let God flow through you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then you better get in, find out what's real and get in there and do it, and then get out there and be of salt and light, be a witness of Jesus, man. It's very serious. So wake up, get real. Get a map. Get online and see what's going on out there. Have compassion. Wake up. Get out of yourself. Have compassion. If you are dead, let God revive you. Um, or else rather get, uh, you know, get, get, get real and get serious, you know. So uh, 
It's very serious. Very serious. So, help us out. We're doing work all over the world. Saving people for eternity, making disciples. Vessels for Jesus. What, rescuing street kids from human trafficking, from selling their organs, from all this other sex trafficking. We, we're rescuing them. Um, helping widows and orphans in India, Indonesia, a, uh, parts of Asia. Supporting missionaries in the front lines of places you never heard of. I'm talking about remote places the, 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 the big preachers, national preachers don't go to. But they're out there. There's over a billion people in India. There's about 250 million in Indonesia. All of Asia's got 80 million, 50 million, 60 million, 30 million here, all over the place. Billion in China. What is there, about three or four billion people in Asia alone? Almost all unreached places in history. So help us out. We're also working in America. So America doesn't sink. So help us out. Loving Life Ministries, int.com, and also calledbeyond.com. Loving Life Ministries, I-N-T, that stands for international.com, and also calledbeyond.com. Look at those websites. There's PayPal. There's other things. There's mailing addresses. Help us out so we can uh, fight the good war. Uh, the, Jesus said, fight the fight, the good fight um, of stealing people away from the enemy, from hell, and bringing them into the kingdom of God, changing hearts and minds so people quit doing evil and they start doing right. So people are safe and good and responsible because they have a new heart and a new mind from the gospel and the filling of the Holy Ghost and having demons cast out and renewing their mind and heart. And that's what we're doing. And that's the only thing. You can't change people by wars and bombs. They'll just get more angry and, you know, vindictive. Laws are good, but you can't make people do right. You know, even the politicians that made the laws not doing it when no one's looking. And they're getting caught. Amen. It's a time of season to be caught. It's t exposing time. Unveiling time. It's uh, Romans 13 time. Uh, the, the authority is coming with the sword. And every area, every spirit, soul, and body, natural, whatever, spirit, the, authority is the authorities that are of God are coming with different kinds of swords. And they're going to bust you. So you better repent. The only thing that can make you repent is uh, the gospel to commit to, to Jesus, to covenant with him unto death and let him cleanse you, give you a new heart and a new mind and then keep seeking him and letting his word wash and cleanse you and asking for the Holy Ghost and fire to cleanse you and make you powerful and right so you can do right and you want to do right. That's the only thing that can change anyone. I've seen the most evil people on earth born again by the gospel because we preached it and compelled them to be saved, led them how to be saved Push them to be saved. Give your life to Jesus. Repent of everything. Come to him. Boom. God touched them, healed them, delivered them. Miracle signs and wonders. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Love, truth, righteousness, integrity, holiness. And those people won't do wrong no matter what. You can't force them to do wrong. When no one's looking, they're still doing right. Why? They, they love God and they fear God. Amen. You should be afraid to go to hell. Hello. You better preach about hell. Preach about heaven and hell and eternity. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, help us out. Help us out. This is some of the best teaching you'll hear. Straight shooting. Don't care what people think. Put it out there. Uh, the seed is good. I'm putting good seed. The people's hearts and minds are different types of soil, but that's your business. But I'm putting good seed out there. If your heart and mind is right, it'll, it'll help you. If your heart and mind is hard and evil and selfish and rebellious, it won't help you. But um, amen. That's what you got to do. The sower sows the word. And just leave it there. Let God give the increase. Amen. Seek God for uh, truth and understanding in your heart and mind. And so you, uh, amen, just put it out there. Be a soldier. Help us out. Calledbeyond.com. Lovinglifeministriesint.com. And help us out and God will bless you. Amen.